I'm here with designer Molly Shaler with Howcraft, and we're talking about quick and easy projects today. I love this necklace, Molly. Thank you. It's so pretty, and what a great statement. It is. These are a lot of great stones on here, and you really only need to learn one technique to make the whole necklace. Even better. Yep, we're just going to open some gem rings. Now let me tell you a little bit about um, what we're using here. We've got some sliders, and these come in a bunch of different finishes and stones and colors. Yeah, and those look like druzy. Yep. The inside of the quartz. That so wonderful, pretty. faceted, kind of broken up glass look. It's yeah. really fun. And then um, all we need to do now basically is you need to choose a chain. So you can choose any chain you want. Uh, I chose a gold, shiny gold chain here, and I quickly opened a jump ring and attached a couple of. Um, like a toggle clasp, okay. but you could use any kind so you want. So you just want to make sure that the links are big enough for yes. your jump rings to go through? Yep. And yeah, you can use um, pretty fine chain, because you can. but the jump rings do have to be substantial enough to hold these large components. So. Okay. So yep. how do you set up your, to turn the slider into a pendant? Well, I'm going to start with the center pendant, okay. because it's, it's kind of a double. So I, I flip these over, and I'm going to use a jump ring to connect the two together. Now, on the backs of these sliders are four holes. And so I just choose one, and because they're circular, it doesn't matter which one you choose. So I'm gonna go ahead and work the jump ring through that one, and through the second one, and then close it up to complete the center drop. There we go. And you just close it up, and then you just find the center link on your chain, once you've got it closed, and there we go. And then you get to attach this. So that, like, it holds it together almost as though it's one you can't even really see that jump ring. That is so clever. Then you'll take another jump ring. You can use your fingernails, I sometimes do that. That's not so good for them. And I'm gonna go ahead and just attach this. I kind of like, I eyeballed the center. I sometimes do that on some of these necklaces. And I'm going to use the hole opposite the one I just used. Okay. And of course, to find the center of the chain, you can fold it in half. Mm-hmm. Pick it up that way with a head pin or something. Yep. Great. So you've got that. Now you'd like to start in the center and then work my way out. And some people like their components closer together, and others like them farther, and that which shows off a little more of the chain. But um, on this one, basically, what I do is I just count an even number of links out from each one. And one thing about, these are some components that, um, these are also four-hold um, sliders, but they're oval, so that if you hung them from just one oh, of these loops, crooked. yeah, they'd be crooked. So what I've done is I went ahead and I put two jump rings into each of those holes on the top end of my oval. And then I took a larger jump ring, and I kind of shake these down a little bit, and I'm going to go through this, like so. So you just want to be sure that you choose jump rings that of the two different sizes, or basically mm -hmm. you're just looking for the right length on your necklace. Right. It's something that, um, and also the for these right here, the ones in the ovals, you have to make sure that all three of them fit. Like I, I would have maybe used a smaller jump ring for the center, but it, um, it wouldn't have stretched. It wouldn't hang right. Mm -hmm. Oh, it wouldn't be big yeah, enough to connect I them. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't connect the two jump rings. Yeah. So you end up with something like that, and then I just take another jump ring, and open it, and I'll use this to attach to the chain. I'd probably, I don't know, on this one, it might be kind of nice to have them closer together because the one that I demonstrate or have over here is they're pretty far apart. So you could just count up, say, one, two, three, four, add your yeah. little jump ring there. And of and course, it's easier when you're working at home and you can pick it up and hold it really yes. close, but we're trying to make it really simple to see. So, yeah. So then you just close it up. And then you're going to continue around in that same manner all the way around, just doing identical links. Yeah, you know what? I love it even with just the pendant. It is pretty What a quick and easy pendant. gift, too. Mm -hmm. That would be really great. Yeah, so when you are building your structure, then you just have your longer things in the toward the front and then getting shorter toward the back. Yep, and if you wanted to continue all the way around, you could. Or some people, I'm one of these people, I kind of like having the chain in the back um, so that it lays flat against my neck. Yeah. And, um, and you can just make some decisions as you go about colors and texture changes and different things like that. Yeah, let's take a look at the different colorways because... Okay. 
Um, I love the purple necklace especially. Thanks. Yeah, and the way that you mix that matte chain with the sparkly mm -hmm. findings and components is really pretty. And did you use the same technique to create the pendant? I did. Um, well, for the pendant, actually, that's just a regular bead through which the, um, the eye pen goes. Yeah. But then for the teardrops, which they had the similar situation as the oval shapes, I couldn't just, they don't have one hole at the very top. So you had to create that special triangular mm -hmm. hanger with the jump rings. Yep. And it looks like you put some bead caps on there. That really dresses it up. Yeah. I thought that that would made it, it kind of coordinates the chain with the, with the beads. Yeah, connects really it all together. Pretty. Tell Thanks. us a little bit about the silver one with the druzies too. That one, um, you can get a couple, lots of different colors of druzies, and so I kind of like the almost the gunmetal colored druzy along with a more of a matte silver druzy, and then it's it's kind of like a frosty necklace with that those light blue You're right, faceted. Yeah. That is really pretty. And you have that kind of icy silver chain too. Yeah. Hey, you know what? Let's take a look at the gold necklace and the earrings one more time because I forgot to say anything about the earrings. Oh, that's all right. I don't know if. I'll take a look really quick here and I'll show you that they also use the same sort of conf configuration of um, jump rings in order to help them hang straight. Yeah. So. And I love the way that the druzies and the faceted sliders work together too to kind of create. I, I really think that that idea of juxtaposing mm -hmm. the, the shiny and the matte is really smart. It really makes them pop. Yeah, I think it's nice. And they also have like these different textures of the rings around the glass and drazy components. I think that those kind of slightly different textures add to it too because this one's a kind of a brassy one. This one's brassy but plain and this one has a nice kind of shiny feel which gives you a little bit of variation for each yeah. design. This is a really great idea and so quick and easy.